Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus is good. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to your presence. To you be all the glory, to you be all the honor. I'm just testing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. To you be all the glory. Father, Lord, I pray that you speak through me. Have your way. Let your word bless each and every one of us. Give us a deeper revelation unto your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Today, I'm taking my text from the book of um, Mark chapter 1, verse 2 says, Mark chapter 1 verse 37, sorry about that, Mark chapter 1 verse 37, I'm going to read, thank you Jesus, before daybreak, the Lord, the next morning Jesus got up and went out to isolated place to pray, later Simon and the others went out to find him, when they found him they said, everyone is looking for you, but Jesus replied, we must go on to other town as well. And I will preach to them too. That is why I came. Praise the Lord. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching the, in the synagogue and casting out demons. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of him, begging, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. He said, Move with compassion. Jesus reached out and touched him. I'm willing, he said, be healed. Instantly the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus went out on his way with the same warning. Verse 34. Don't tell anyone about this, about the instant. Go to the pure priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Verse 45. But the man went and spread the good word, proclaiming to everyone what has happened. As a result, large crowds soon surround Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded place, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. There is power in the word of God. Before they turned the Lord next morning, Jesus got up to I went out to a isolated place to pray. As we as as we all know today is uh famous Saturday. It's all about um our father's business. That was the reason Jesus came. He came to reconcile us back to God. He came that we might restore, he came that we my regain our lost glory which we lost in the garden of eden praise the lord he went out to a solitary place to pray in going about this evangelism it's a workshop we all know that we need to pray that's the essence of this saturday you pray then you go out because the days are evil it's uh, um when you pray, committing the, the souls into the hands of God, that the Lord God Almighty will make their stony hearts and, 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 and they're about opening up their hearts to whatever you are going to say. You cannot go out without praying. Jesus prayed. He has set a good example that before we go out, we need to pray. We need to commit the people unto you. God's son, because they are God's own people. You need to commit yourself into the hands of God, that God will feel you, that he will speak through you as his oracle for that moment. Praise the Lord. The Bible says Jesus prayed. Later Simon, 36 says Simon and the other went out to find him. Others joined. He didn't go alone. Lande kureka maske le bonsondo. Ma ande kureka yende le bonsende kayande. They went to look for him and they joined. Jesus is coming. Come and join the crew. Come and join the team. Hallelujah. Le kalande kureka bonsoto. The weapon God has given. Come and sharpen it up through evangelism. Thank you, Jesus. He said they went to find him. When they found the vestas, when they find him, they say, everyone is looking for you. 
Jesus came. He went about doing good. Because of his goodness, because of what he was doing, people were looking for him. I decree and I declare by the power in the blood of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Lord God Almighty will make each and every one of us a sought after, a joy of many generations. They will continue to look for us. And even when they find us, we will not misuse the opportunity but to let them know about the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We should tell them about the love of Jesus. That should be our yastic of coming in contact with people. Let them know about the light is coming back again. That is appointed unto a man to die after death, there is judgment. Have you given your life to Christ? Don't hesitate. Always let them know. As you mingle with them, spread the good news. That's exactly what happened here. Thank you, Jesus. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking. And Jesus replied, we must go to the other side. He replied, he commanded, let's go to the other side. Let's move on. When you are doing evangelism, you don't stay in one spot. You move on. You just move around. Stay in one spot. It's like, let me say, wherever you are, the people in that location, they are the people you will meet. But if you go to a different location, more of the people you have no witness to before, those are the people you will come in contact with. That's what Jesus said. Let us go over to this. Jesus was all about the places. He was in the synagogue preaching and all over the places. So Jesus was all over the places. He implored us to go all over the places, praise the Lord, to tell others about the good news. Because he has created every one of us. It's like you're creating an awareness. It's coming back again. That seed you sown in there will generate one day or the other. Praise the Lord. He said, Jesus, hallelujah. He went to the others as well and I preached to them. He preached to them. He preached to them. That is why I came. This is the sin. Jesus said, that is the reason he came. He came to show on the pathway. He showed us the pathway. He handed over the Father's business to each and every one of us. Let us embrace it with much love. Irrespective of how busy we are, let us not be too busy not to tell others about the love of Christ. Wherever you are, just create an awareness. I know that sometimes it might be some, it might be a bit uh, for you to open your mouth, but when you open your mouth, the first day, you will see the Holy Spirit flowing through you. Always create, even when you are talking, and always create a way of slotting about the love of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Remember today is a workshop. Workshop. Always find a way of slotting in. in. Praise the Lord. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogue and casting out demons. Preaching. He was preaching, he was casting out demons, he was preaching, he was putting into practice the power of God that is able to save and to deliver. Praise the Lord. We mustn't, we mustn't forget about that. The power to save and to deliver. He was casting out demons. Praise the Lord. They created awareness of his need by people. Jesus was never alone. Let the love of brethren dwell. Let us see this as let us see. That's why I say let us see this from as the father's business. Let us see evangelists as our our father's business. We have our own schedule. We have our own, our own business. But this should be our priority. I pray that God will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Take praise the Lord. Verse 39 says, He traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogue and casting out demons. Verse 40 says, A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of him. It was a different scenario. He went about preaching. All of a sudden, as I said, as you go about anything can happen, just be prepared. And knelt before him and he prayed. 
if you see anybody say any prayer, just pray and leave the rest to God. That's the way I see it. And just pray and you see God move. Surprisingly, anything can happen. I've experienced this many times. Just, just, just pray. Praise the Lord. Jesus make a boy and preach out and touch him because of the faith of the man. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Positive action. The man put his faith in action. He said, if you are willing, with what the man said, Jesus was moved with a compassionate hand. That's verse 40, 41. He was moved out of compassion. If you are willing, you can. He believed. He had that faith that Jesus can. Because he is in need. I don't know what you might be going through even as you go about. We all have our challenges. We all have different things happening. But it will end in praise. It will end in praise. Only if we have faith and believe in him. Dead to believe. Believe it and say it out. And put it into action. Look at this man said. If you are willing, you can heal me. God is willing. He's our father. He's our ever-present help in time of trouble. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. He will deliver. He's there to heal us. He's there to deliver us from every form of any form of sicknesses and disease. Because he's our father. He's ever faithful to his word. Praise the Lord. He said, if you are willing. And Jesus said, I'm willing. I'm willing. That's the reason I came. I'm willing. What is it that is tying you down not to? It doesn't matter. I'm born again. No. Jesus set a good example for us. Hallelujah. Let it become part of us. Including me that is speaking. To reach out to people in our world. In a place of what? In our world. Wherever you are. Praise the Lord. He said, I'm willing, he said, be healed. Because he was moved with a compassion. Because of the question. And this tarry ways how we pray as well. How we present ourselves before God in time of prayer. He, will, he attracts heaven to come down. Do you go to the presence of God complaining with doubt, unbelief? Unbelief, or let me just pray. Maybe one's mind is not there. Distraction, we should allow that one to be our portion in Jesus' name. Because of his positive action, heaven came down. Jesus said, I'm willing. You, as a believer, you're looking at me. What is it that you are going through that you feel ill? If only I can be able to get over these circumstances and situation. God has given you the power. You got the power in your tongue. Look at the way the man approached. And there was a positive reaction from our Lord Jesus Christ. He had compassion. He was moved. Your action determined the attention of heaven. Praise the Lord. I pray that God will give us a deeper understanding of who he is and what exactly he wants us to, to do. Because Jesus said, it's a student that I go away. If I do not go away, the comforter will not come. The comforter is there, which is the Holy Spirit, to comfort each and every one of us, to teach us what to do and how to go about it, and to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Praise the Lord. The truth in the word of God, which is the wisdom of God. And having that understanding to be able to know what God is saying. Because if we don't um, embrace what Jesus left for each and every one of us, who is going to do it? There's no one. Hallelujah. I have to. You have to. By the grace of God. 
he has called us into his food. We have been chosen, ordained to go and bring forth fruit. And he said, if we fruit abide, whatever we ask, he will give to us. He has called us. Let me book of uh, John, John 15. He has called us into to go and bear more fruits. And if the fruit abides, anything we ask, the Lord God Almighty said, He will do it. Because this is the command, commandment of God. This is the word of God. That we should go and bring forth fruits. The fruits that we abide. The fruits that we abide. We are talking of discipleship now. Discipleship. Being able to go and bring others. In your church, what do you do? I know most of us serve, most of us serve in the church. For those who have been given the opportunity to serve in the church, what do you do? The response to that, God is calling you to go forth and bring forth fruit. Yeah, my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you, John 15, verse 14 says, As was I call you no servant, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for you all things that I have heard of my Father have made known to you. You have not chosen me. I am asking you. You have not chosen me, verse 16. But I have chosen you and ordained you. Going out is made for everybody who has confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and his Savior. If it's your Lord, it's your Savior, it's a mandate. He said, verse you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. Fruits. And that your fruits should remain. But whoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And if you read from verse 1, it's a place he said, he said in verse 7, if he abide in me, and my words abide, you shall ask whatever you will, and now it will be done to you. It will be done to you. Hear ye, my Father, glory that you bear much fruit. You are glorifying the name of our Lord Jesus. You are creating an awareness. A lot of people haven't heard. I'm telling you the truth. Even when you are telling, you say, I don't understand what you say, and this and that. That's the reason. Creating an awareness. Making, giving them the information of where we are. Like, like this trap now is designed in a way so that they will. There are many traps. I have other traps as well. I'm not condemning any other traps. I've lived in this. I've lived in here now for quite a while. I know what, what I, I know. The kind of the people. The, I should be able to know the kind of society I live. I'm going to tell them about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is sovereign place like the United Kingdom. I know that. Like other places. There are governed set of rules and laws. Then I went to, there is another kingdom which you cannot see with your visible eye. They will not. It's a spiritual kingdom. That is the kingdom of God. Especially the, the foreigners. The the other day, in, um, I will give by, is it St. Paul's? I went to St. Paul's. I went there and they were sitting down, about four of them. I spoke to them and they, they took the trial. Immediately they started reading. They started laughing. I was asking God, why are they laughing? See, because the way I started this trial. The kingdom has sovereign place like the United Kingdom and other places not there. They are governed by a set of rules laid down by the parliament and broken down to laws and policies of for different parastatas and establishment in the kingdom. This governed set of rules and laws compel everyone to comply with one another for good governance. However, there is another kingdom. Do you understand? There is another kingdom far superior than this earthly kingdom. They were reading and they were laughing. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, some standing here 
right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God arrive in great power. That's Mark 9, 1. The kingdom of God is within you. You need to give your life to Jesus. Or you, uh, the, the, the foreigners will just, it's like, you are creating an awareness in their heart so that when they go, by the grace of God, wherever they go, the prayer you are prayed, that's why we are calling people to come and join, to pray, will be infused. The Holy Spirit will stand them up because you've, hallelujah, because they've heard and they have heard the Holy Spirit will pick them up through prayer. That's why that's the essence of this forum. To pray and reach out. I thank God for what God is doing. Praise the Lord. I give God all the glory, all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. To you be all the glory. I bow down before you, the ancient of day. Jesus was moved with compassion. He was healed instantly. The leprosy left him. Positive action towards the things of the kingdom attract heaven attention. The man showed interest in Christ. He said, he was requested, this is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I want. What do you want? God is asking you. God is asking me, what do I want? But lay it at the feet of Jesus. And God is going to tell others, we well, thank God. The kingdom of God is within you. It's within me. There are people they have not heard. That woman said, oh, I'm happy. It's, it will, I hope you will like it here. I said, Jesus Christ is coming back again. She now said, he's coming back again? Yeah. I said, yes. He said, I pray you will like it here. I said, no, he's coming back for his own. You need to be prepared. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, you, <laughs> you need to be you need to be prepared to meet him. Ah, prepared to meet him. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. The kingdom of God is at time. You need to give your life to Jesus. That's why I said he's coming back again to take his home. He's the, he, he, he's, he's the ruler of the OS. He's coming. And you need to be prepared. If, uh, she now now is like a scale drop from her. And the Holy Spirit not picking our understanding. Of him and what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. She has not heard. She has not said something like that. It was like you are the line. The line. I throw more light. I said, uh, "Do you celebrate Easter? Good Friday?" She told me yes. Is Easter Sunday? He said yes. Okay. I said, "Do you know the essence why we do that on yearly basis?" He said, "Why?" Then I started talking. He died on Friday. Good Friday. He rose again on Sunday. On Monday, he ascended into heaven and he said, she was just looking at me, and he said, the same way he ascended into heaven, he's coming back again. So I clapped my hand. He said, is he really? I said, yes. That's why I said, you need to give your heart to him. You need to be prepared. He's going to come in like a thief. Brethren, it's time to wake up. We all have our needs. We all have our our needs. We have our challenges, but that is not enough. It's time to incorporate into our activities, maskale kuraka, into our activities. So many, I'll call it evangelism, to tell us that by the love of Christ, because Jesus is coming back again. Praise the Lord. So that is it. When the verse 24 say, Don't tell anyone, Jesus said unto on his way with same warning, don't tell anyone about this. Go to the priest. Go to the priest. Jesus was not talking here about testimony. Testing, go to the priest. Where do you see priests? You don't see priests in the marketplace or shopping mall. The priest is in the church. He said, Go. And give testimony of what God has done for you. You are looking at me now by the grace of God. You are born again. You're giving your heart to the Lord Jesus. You proclaim me as, as your Savior. And you know He's coming back again. He's coming back again. If you don't know that, 
That's the essence of being born again. It's coming back again. You need to be prepared. And have you, you share your testimony on daily basis? Remember the book of um, the book of Revelation. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Revelation. Thank you, Lord. 12, 11 says, I will read it out. Twelve Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto, unto the death. They overcome him. Testimony is the devil does not want to hear God is good. He doesn't want to hear you giving glory to God. When you give your testimony, praise the Lord, you are testifying of who God is in your life. It's a very powerful tool when doing evangelism. Remember, I said this is a workshop to know what to do if you are going about evangelism. Jesus said, go. That man had an encounter with Jesus. After he got his healing, he said, go and tell others. On daily basis, God blesses us. Do you share your testimony? Testimony is very powerful. Even some uh, testimony is very powerful. Peace signifies the church. The priest signifies the church. I cannot be in marketplace. He said, go to he gave testimony to the priest before he now went publicly to tell others about what Christ has done in his life. Testimony is very powerful. We need to share our testimony when doing evangelism. I share my testimony. This is who I was before. This is how I had an encounter. There was one day I was sharing my testimony from other testimony and the boy was just looking and I never knew that on this other different religion. And the Holy Spirit keep telling me, and I was telling him, I told him, this is who I was before, and how I gave my life. And uh, later I asked him, Where, what is your religion? He now told me, and I said, ah, half of my family is from your, your religion, but my auntie who gave me, oh, my auntie who gave me my, mid, my mid name, middle name, my native name, I'll call it. I told him all about him. That this is what happened. Jesus is real. And this is how I gave my life. If not because I had an encounter with the ancient today, I wouldn't have. Maybe I would have been your religion. Because she so much loved me. Even when I was even young, old, she put me on her laps. I said, that my auntie is late now. She prays. How many times a day? Five times a day. So I said that's what I would have been because uh, she so much loved me and I was willing to follow her to her yearly pilgrimage. But before the Lord arrested me, he was looking at me. I say that is the reason I am a Christian today. And that's the reason I believe that Jesus is alive and he's alive forevermore. Nobody can convince me that no. I was already convinced before I started looking for him. I was arrested. So I told him. So I gave my testimony. And those who don't want to listen before they listen, and they do like this. Some of them say, oh, I'm atheist. Then I will start. I said, I'm not here to preach religion. And I don't preach religion. I'm preaching the real relationship with your maker. Thank God you said you believe in God. You believe in God, say yes. That God is a holy God. His eye does not behold iniquity. In the Old Testament, I go to the Old Testament. That I was doing that as well. I said, even in Africa today, people do that. They kill goats, they kill animals, they kill all sorts of things to, to appease God. He will do like this. I said, but Jesus came and paid the price once and for all. He said, no more sacrifice. He said it is finished at the cross of Calvary. You don't need any sacrifice. 
You see them shaking their head. I'm talking, these are foreigners. I said, so Jesus is alive. There is no other way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come unto the Father except through me. That's how I believe. I say, if you dare confess him now as your Lord and Savior, you will see the difference in your life. I say, this tracks, if you read it to the very end, to the very end, prayer of faith, you read it, you see what will happen to you now. I would give a testimony of somebody who did an instant healing. He said it with his mouth. It's not even maybe I stage I stage it or something like that. It's a foreigner. It's a foreigner. And he just said, This is what happened. I wasn't expecting it. And he stands it. And God just and God, and God just said, He said with him, man, I just got healed. I was looking. He was now asking for more prayer. So that is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Praise the Lord. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. He gave a testimony. Testimony is to bring honor and glory to God. It's not Testimony is not to be used against the testifier. This is what the testifier said and use it against that person. No, it's to bring glory and honor to the ancient to the day, the bright and the morning star. It's time we get understanding of who God is. That's why it's a study to show yourself approved unto the law. Christianity is not, um, it's not a religion. It's a profession by the grace of God to practice. The path of the just shine brighter and brighter. As we continue to go and hear the word of God, let us put into practice. Praise the Lord. So, testimony is to edify God, bring glory to God. I use that one. Me, I, that's what, I, on the street land, even when people are many, I just said, this is who I am. This is how, because maybe I feel that's where God wants me to be talking more to people so that they will know that Jesus is alive and is alive forevermore. Praise the Lord. And he gave a testimony. Verse 45 said, The man went and spread the word, Proclaim it to everyone. He went to the church first. He went to the public. I'm reading Mark chapter 1, verse 45. If you have it in your, just go through it. But the man went and spread in the word, proclaiming to everyone what I've had. As a result, large crowd, your testimony draw people to God. Large crowd so surround Jesus. Your testimony will make people to believe. What is God doing in your life on a daily basis? God blesses each and every one of us on daily. Do we just close our mouth and say it doesn't matter? A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Praise the Lord. It's time to open up. Hallelujah. And let people know who God is in our life. It's, some people just keep mute. They don't want to talk. Me, I talk. And they know everybody know. I can't, I can't close my mouth. You can you can you can do any I can't close my mouth, it's not my fault. Even when I'm at work, I two days was it two days at work? We just I was just talking. I don't need know when I slot I just we're just changing and I don't just slot it in. I just just like that. And and that's it. So and I pray, I'll start praying. God over to you. He said, if you have been lifted up, you will draw me to yourself. If you lift him up, you know how to drop them because they are his children. We are all born of God. We are the children of God. Irrespective of your color, race, your religion, because we were once in Egypt until he brought us back into the fold of Christ. Praise the Lord. Remember, I said it's a workshop, so we're just talking on how to win souls. Come and join the forum. And you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Shall you understand what I'm saying? You will be blessed. People who have, they've all gone to their different churches. Some of them, they are all pastors today by the grace of God. And God is moving. If you want to do it in your area, awareness. Let people know who you are. You are a child 
of God. And tell them Jesus is coming back again. The devil might not like it. He might fight one way or the other. But you are more than the conqueror. Through him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus is Lord. Father, I have shared your word. To you be all the glory. Lord, I pray that this word will quicken each and every one of us. I will put it to practice. Hallelujah. So that your grace, your anointing, increase of your anointing, increase of your grace, continue to multiply on daily basis in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.